Today I'm going to show you 91 Ableton shortcuts that will help you make music faster so you can focus more on being creative. I've put together a free PDF version of all the shortcuts I'm going to cover in this video, so make sure to grab that in the description for free. And with that, let's dive in. Now let's start with the browser. You can use both your down and up arrow keys here to navigate through folders, different categories, and you can press right and left to navigate between different hierarchy of folders. So for example, I could go down to my like samples folder down here. I can go right into all the folders, right again, and keep going down. And by simply navigating to a sample, I'll be able to audition it. Now what's really cool is once I've auditioned a sample, I can press left to stop it and go back up to the hierarchy of folders. But if I wanted to load that into a sampler or in this case, Ableton Simpler with a MIDI track, I just press enter and it loads into a sampler that I can then play with my keyboard. In the browser as well, you can press command or control F if you're on Windows to open up the search bar at the top left there. You can search for something. And then what you can also do is while there's a search term enabled, you can actually go down uh, through the different folders, the different packs you've got, I uh, navigate to say, let's say I go to my samples one, navigate to uh, something and it will only search for sounds with that in the title, right? So if I wanted to kick, go to my drums one shots and it'll only show me kicks. If I found some good samples that I like that I wanna save for later, what I can do is actually go down, scroll through them and then I can use on my number pad, uh, numbers one through seven to give them these different colors here. So I'm just going through one through seven there and these seven numbers are reflective of the seven collections we've got up in the top left corner here. Now I've named these what I've named them, but doing so will add, say this kick drum, if I wanted to add it to my drums, which is number six, press six on there. And now you'll see it show up in my drums collection. So pretty cool for saving things. Obviously pressing the number again will remove it from that collection. And of course, if you need to rename a sample, a folder or anything, you can just press command or control R, type in the new name and then press enter and it will save. Okay, so moving away from the browser to the arrangement slash session view, uh, speaking of, you actually switch between the session and arrangement view by hitting tab on your keyboard, uh, which you can see goes between the session view, which is great for coming up with ideas and performing live, to the arrangement view, which let's be honest, most of us are using as electronic music producers. By the way, for whatever reason, you are out of full screen. Uh, on Windows, you can press F11, or on Mac, you can press Command Control F to go into full screen mode which just helps you get more immersed in the session. If you've got a sample loaded up in a sampler, you can just press Q on your keyboard and it will load up this swapping instrument mode on the browser here. And you can simply, again, use the arrow keys, find a new sample, press enter, and it will simply load that in real quick. And this is a great way to audition different sounds rapidly when you're in the context of a production session. So let's not exit out of hot swap mode by pressing Q again. And now what we can do is use either Control Alt B or Command Alt B on Mac. And this will actually allow us to close the browser. This gives us more screen real estate, perhaps when we've already chosen sounds and just want to focus working on the arrangement. And then of course we can bring it back by pressing the same thing. This same shortcut format also applies for other areas of Ableton's user interface. For example, I can press Control or Command Alt M to hide the mixer on the right there. I can do Control or Command Alt O to Hide the overview at the top there. If I tab over to session view, I can use command or control alt s to hide or show the sends there. I can also do command or control alt i to show the ins and outs on the right there, which is pretty cool if I'm not particularly caring about where my sound sources are coming from, I can just hide that. I can do command alt or control alt l to do the uh, devices down the bottom. I just press shift forward slash to get to the question mark. So that's pretty cool. The really helpful thing here is to remember which letter applies to which part of the uh, view. So for example, B is for browser, O is for overview, uh, I is for ins and outs, uh, S is for sense, L is for detail. That's the only confusing one of the lot. <laughs> now let's move over to our mixer on the right here. Now, like with the browser, we can also use up and down to change our faders. I actually really like working like this because I can just be listening to a song and say I want to bring up the volume of my background pad here. <laughs> I can just use the up and down keys to move in one dB increments. I can also hold shift to move in 0.1 dB increments. Mm -hmm. 
which is really helpful for just fine tuning your mix. Some people prefer using their mouse here instead, but the arrows I find really helpful. To set any parameter, whether it's your fader value, maybe a send amount or whatever to its default value, you can just click on it and press delete. Uh, and that's really, really helpful just to go back to zero on the faders or perhaps negative infinity on the sends. Of course, type in an exact value uh, on your keyboard there, which is pretty helpful if you're wanting to get to a specific one. And also shift is just helpful even if you're uh, moving it with your mouse. So for example, this stab here, I could then solo it and just adjust the fader volume while holding shift. It just gives me a much slower rate of control so that I'm not just going crazy with the fader here, right? Now let's talk about our basic arrangement view shortcuts. So the obvious one here would be copy, which is command or control C, and then paste, which is command or control V. One really cool thing you can do as well that I love about Ableton is the command D shortcut. So I could go ahead and select all my drums here, press command or control D, and that will duplicate all of the drums over the same time frame that has been selected. Let's press command or control Z to undo that. And if you want to redo it, you can press shift command Z, which is pretty cool. You can have your marker at the, any point in the track, and then you can press shift and left or right to select the adjacent amount of time. This is going to increment in whatever the current grid is set to, depending on how zoomed in you are and those sorts of things. If you want to zoom in on that particular selection, you can press Z to zoom in or X to zoom back out to where you were. You can then move the whole selection of whatever you've selected left or right. Now this will apply differently depending on whether you are in automation view or whether you are not in automation view, but as we're not, we're gonna be moving the entire bunch of samples that are selected in that portion. I love to do this with say a baseline or a rhythmic stab that maybe just needs to be offset by half a bar or a bar uh, and see what rhythmic effects I can come up with. <laughs> One really cool screen real estate hack I like to use is simply pressing H, which will automatically adjust the height of all of our tracks to maximize the effectiveness of the screen real estate. If you've got a lot of tracks, this can be quite helpful just to save space in one little shortcut. And same thing with the W, which does it for the time scale. So I can scale my entire tracks arrangement, particularly as I've got a reference track up the top here. When I press W, of course, if I delete this, it will then only zoom in on what? is actually going on in my track. Now for some audio hacks. If I have a bunch of clips selected, I can actually press Command or Control J to consolidate those selected audio clips into a new clip. This will create a new sample in your live set. I like to think of this as J for join. The other cool thing you can do though is Command or Control E, which will split a clip. So this is particularly helpful if we go over to the section where we've got more of a loop going on. I could extend this out a bit I could start chopping up my uh, break here with Command E and then start moving slices around or you know, even with the left and right keys like I showed you earlier. Or if you have a selection, you can also press Command E and it will cut out just that section, which is really handy if you wanna move an entire part of a audio clip. Getting detailed with the time, I can go to any point in the track and actually press Command I and insert a number of bars, beats and 16th. So if I wanna say add eight bars before our drop, I can go ahead and just do that there. I can also select eight bars. Again, I could use the shift arrows to do that, or I could do it with my mouse and then press command I that way. And it will just automatically do that without me having to manually type in how long it's gonna be. On this note, if you really wanna quickly reverse any audio, press R and immediately you'll get this reversed copy. And then obviously you can press R again or just undo to go back to the original. This of course works as well if you select just a tiny portion it will automatically cut it for you. Which is great for adding little reverse drum fills. Extending out the duplicate option we mentioned earlier, you can actually use shift as a qualifier to actually not only duplicate, but duplicate the time. This means that any other sections you've got later in the track will be moved along accordingly. So let's say I wanted to duplicate this middle 16 bar section here. I could go ahead and select all of that. Instead of pressing normally Command D, which would overwrite the next 16 bars, I can press Shift Command D to duplicate that. And you'll see all the time is moved down the line, which is really handy if you need to add a section in the middle of a drop or in the middle of a breakdown and extend things out. This of course works with Shift 
command delete, which will actually not only delete the section, uh, what's in there, but it will delete all the time associated with it as well. So if you're trying to shorten your arrangement, this is a great tool. Speaking of grid sizes, like I mentioned earlier, you can use command or control one to go to a more uh, tighter grid or command two to go to a more wider grid. This is handy when using the left and right because you can shift and hold and get small increments, which might be what you want. Of course, you can go more granular with a uh, fixed or adaptive grid by right clicking, but if you're trying to do something really short, it's helpful to do that. Pressing Command or Control 3 moves to a triplet grid, which is pretty cool. And then pressing Command or Control 4 moves to a unsynced grid. So this is helpful if you are having uh, free form, not beat synced stuff going on in your arrangement. Very cool. And then you can press Command 4 again to go back to the previous grid you were at. And then obviously Command 3 to get rid of the triplet grid. You want to loop a section of the song simply select it using the arrow keys and shift, press command or control L and that will loop it up for you. So that it goes back to the beginning and that way you can focus on just one part of the track. Command L or control L to get out of loop mode. With the loop braces selected, you can actually shift, uh, move left or right to move where the track is being looped. So if you wanna go to a different section, you can quickly do that. And also command left and right will actually extend it either way and then you can move it back, extend it out further with control or command. It's really handy. And then you can eventually just get to what you want to loop up, which is awesome. So I could go for a much bigger section here, uh, up to here, for example. And now I've got a huge loop. If I simply want to like go to a, a much larger stretch of audio to loop or a much, much shorter one, I can just simply use the up or down with command or control enabled to do that really, really handy. So now let's go down here to our MIDI and talk about MIDI shortcuts. Speaking of MIDI clips, if you want to select a region, let's shift across with the right arrow key and then press shift command or control M and that will create you a new MIDI clip for that region that's been selected. Now I've got some pre-programmed MIDI here already. Now, if you want to select all of the notes, you can press command or control A that will select all of the notes in that clip. And then you can press shift command U this will bring up the quantize window and obviously control for windows. And you can select the amount of quantization you want to apply, the grid you want to quantize to, whether you want to quantize both the start and the end of each note, pretty handy. And then to use the last settings rapidly, you don't have to press shift two. You can just press command or control U and watch the notes slowly get closer to the grid. There we go. So now we can see that they are more on grid and less freeform. If you want to move a note off the grid without worrying about it snapping, so obviously if you select it and move it left or right, it will just move. Hold shift to extend it out or command to move it off the grid. So command temporarily disables the grid. Alt moving will move to the next note in that particular, uh, you know, note values. By the way, on Windows, the command moving left and right, I'm pretty sure is alt. So good to know if you're using Windows. Obviously you can go up or down to move notes on the piano roll, shift. Up or down moves notes and octaves, which is a game changer. For example, selecting all the MIDI and going up the octave. This can be helpful to find the right feeling or vibe in the certain key. You can obviously move all the MIDI up or down a semitone to change the key, which can be helpful. And if you hold command or control while clicking and dragging with your mouse, this will adjust the velocity of all the notes, as you can see down in the display here. Uh, you can obviously turn off the MIDI editor preview to make that less annoying. <laughs> I've actually got an older video on Ableton's piano roll that I'll leave a link for in the top right. So you can go check that out if you want more piano roll stuff, but let's move on. Let's talk about other track shortcuts. So I already showed you how to add a MIDI clip, but let's go ahead and press command or control T to just add a normal audio track. So the shift will make it whether it's a MIDI track or not. You can also press control alt T or command option T on a Mac to create a new return track. As you can see, this E return just popped up there, which is helpful for adding returns really quick. If you have a bunch of tracks you'd like to group together, for example, all of these effects, I can shift click them all and then press command G to add a new group, which I can then press command R to rename as say effects. While renaming, by the way, you can use tab to quickly scroll through each of these ones accordingly. And it just means you don't have to press command R a bunch of times for each track. If you're wanting to move tracks up and down in the arrangement view here, simply hold command or control and move the track up or down. You can say move this one in between different groups and stuff like that, just so that you have uh, it set up the way you'd like it. And if you'd like to turn off a track, you can simply press zero. So if I unsolo here and have this selected, you'll see the zero turns off and on the track. 
And S actually allows us to solo that particular track as well. So if I'm listening to the track, say I wanna to listen to this break, I can just be playing it with the space key and press S to solo, zero to disable it. This leads me to another thing. Be careful to notice whether you've got the track or the clip selected. If you have the track selected, zero will turn the track off. If you have the clip selected, zero will actually deactivate the clip. Now, deactivating the clip is one of my favorite shortcuts because this allows you to temporarily turn off the audio, turn off the MIDI clip without actually having deleted it. So you can always press zero again to re-add it later. This goes for audio clips. This also goes for MIDI notes. So if I select a MIDI note, I can press zero to deactivate that particular note. Maybe the melody I'm writing has too many notes and I just wanna hear a simplified version of it. Probably the most important shortcut I use to be honest. You wanna quickly uh, collapse the track instead of pressing the little arrow or little tab thing there, you can just press U and that will quickly do it for you there. Speaking of automation, we kind of touched on it earlier. Press A to enter automation mode. Uh, this will bring up all of these red lines. Automation mode is great if, for example, if you're wanting to use the shortcuts on the arrangement that we talked about earlier, but you don't wanna apply it to the actual audio. For example, maybe you have some panning automation and you simply wanna duplicate the panning automation without actually changing what's going on in the audio there, which is very, very handy. Just make sure that you're in the respective mode depending on what you're wanting to do there by pressing A. While we're in the mode though, I'll quickly mention that if you do have an automation curve, you can actually turn it from a straight line into a curve by pressing Alt or Option, uh, depending on whether you're on Mac or Windows, and that will add a nice curve there for you, which is pretty cool. Touched on that in my Ableton automation video, so go check that out if you want some cool automation tips as well. If you do have any automation, you can press Delete to get rid of it. If you wanna get rid of all the automation, though, you can press Control or Command Backspace, and that will delete all the automation on those selected channels. And now let's just move on to general Ableton shortcuts. So we're gonna exit automation mode. I've already touched on what constitutes undo and read do in live, but beyond that, you wanna remember Command S to save a project. So I'm just gonna press Command S there and you can see down the bottom right, it says saving current set, or at least it did. If you do hold shift while doing this though, it will actually ask you to create a new project, which is pretty cool if you're wanting to separate it out. Maybe you've made a few changes and it deserves its own folder. If you ever plug in on a certain track that's selected down bottom in the detail view here, you can press Command Option P or Control Alt P that will actually bring up the plugin view. If you want to start recording something in Ableton, you can just press F9 or if you're on Mac, function F9, and that will record. Just make sure you have the right track arm so that it's only recording what you want. And if you have forgotten to record something, let's go back to this 808 here and I play something. Right, you can actually press Shift Command C to enable capture, which will actually retrospectively record what we just played without having to have pressed record. And then lastly, I wanna talk about the MIDI keyboard. And then I wanna talk about the MIDI keyboard. If you press M, this will enable from A to about L uh, to be a playable keyboard that you can use for whatever ARMS track is currently enabled. So as you can see, there's 808. is now able to be played with my keyboard. Exiting MIDI mode by pressing M, I wanna to talk to you about two last shortcuts. Control K. This allows you to create your own custom keyboard shortcuts. For example, I have my tilde apostrophe key mapped to my master on off for my FabFilter Pro L2. So if I actually press Command or Control K to exit key mapping mode, pressing tilde, as you can see, turns on and off my master limiter, which is a helpful thing I have while I'm producing. You can actually create a new one though by clicking whatever parameter you want. So maybe it's the gain, and then I could press maybe forward slash. And this, I can set the, I mean, a max to, so maybe I want a 6 dB increase or something. And then I'll make sure this is set to zero. So we're getting no changes there. It will now switch between zero and 6 dB. I'm not gonna play that because that will hurt your eardrums. The other one is Command or Control M, which is great for if you've got a MIDI keyboard that you wanna manually map parameters to, maybe some knobs or pads. So pressing Command M will go into this mode. Uh, for example, I could select the balance here and map this to the mod wheel. Personally, my MIDI can, controller is already mapped so I don't need to do anything and it won't work in this particular mode but simply once you've selected it move the particular parameter so twiddle the knob or press the pad and that will then show up like it did for the key mode up here and then you can 
fine tune the exact mapping accordingly. And that there, my friends, is a bunch of Ableton shortcuts that you can use to make music a lot faster. If you found these helpful, make sure to grab the free roundup of all of the shortcuts I've covered in this. You can download it, print it out, put it on your wall, have it on your desktop, whatever. If you liked it, give it some thumbs up. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe and leave a comment suggesting what you would like to see on this channel. And until next time, guys, happy producing.